Hello, my name is Dion Brown. I'm going to do my assessment of my lungs, cardiovascular system, and of the abdomen. Hi, Elise. Hello. Hi, thank you for helping me out again. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it. First, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to inspect um, the area. Sorry, are you cold? No, no, no. I'm fine. Warm. I'm fine. Look cool. I got an extra. I'm fine. All right. Inspect the area of her skin. Um, Elise's skin is consistent with the rest of her thorax there are a little bit of discoloration there look like you know areas of pressure mm -hmm. um did you hurt yourself i was moving boxes. okay so probably some compression there at the area um right below her clavicle line um other than that there are no open areas no um asymmetry basically the skin color looks good there are no abnormalities at this point okay i going to go ahead on and look um, basically at your lower back okay mm -hmm. so I'll get you to come up some and maybe if you turn to this side um, I'm going to change positions myself so I can take a look at the posterior section everything on the back looks good um, ain't no asymmetry everything is symmetrical skin does not have any discoloration just see a couple of moles um, there at just different levels throughout the thoracic area. So right now I'm going to kind of um, basically check for thoracic expansion. Okay, my hands may be a little bit cold. Please. Okay. All right, so I'm going to tell you some at the base of her lungs. I'm going to put my hand. I'm going to actually kind of measure C67. That's where I put a bullet into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Basically, I'm at the level T10. I'm going to put my hands here, and I'm going to kind of pinch. Take a deep breath in. Very good. Awesome. Out. Very good. In again. Out. Very good. Awesome. Basically, thoracic expansion is within normal limits with an inspiratory, inspiratory breath as well as expiratory breath. The thoracic expansion was noted. Um, um, now, I'm going to go ahead on and... Percuss, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, gonna percuss the areas from let's see, left to right, okay. I'm gonna use my plexometer, and this is just done with me touching again. I'm gonna just kind of go throughout, okay. Okay, right now I'm just checking, I hear just dullness throughout, and that is normal over the areas. Um, of the scapula as so well as the clavicle. Your hands, are you okay? Warm enough? Mm -hmm. Coming down. Checking throughout, um, basically listening or noting any adventitious sounds, and I don't note any as I am doing her percussion throughout. Um, next, I'm going to basically. Um, check for firmness, okay? okay so i'm going to actually touch like both sides of your you know back and front while you say the word 99 okay, okay. so 99 vibration is felt 99 vibration is felt i'm sorry i don't want to touch 99 okay 99 all right 99 i also feel the vibration on the anterior 99. and posterior it kind of decreases a little bit as i get below the level of the lung and that is normal. I'm gonna take a listen to your breathing okay right now. Alright, I'm gonna start right here in the uh, upper thoracic area. Well I'm gonna go up a little higher because at the apex of the lung. Take a deep breath in. Very good. Clear. Just in and out. Very good. Clear breath sounds, inspiratory, expiratory, no presence of wheeze, bronchi, crackles, or rails. Do not detect or hear any fluid as the least breathes in and out. Then I'm at the basis of her lungs right now and they are clear to auscultation as well. I'm gonna come around to the front. Take a listen up in the cervical area as well. Deep breath. Very good. 
Let's move to the C7. If the tracheal, tracheal branches are the long, coming down. Deep breath. Right at about C3 through 5. Deep breath in and out. And I'm at the bronchial area. Coming down to the thoracic area. Deep breath. I'm in the bronchial vestibular area. There are clear breath sounds throughout. Deep breath. And then coming down to the basis of the lungs, I'm in the vestibular area. All right, sorry, Alisa, mm -hmm. deep breath. All right, very good. Lung sounds are clear, no adventitious breath sounds throughout. Basically, I wanna check um, just basically the measurement of your diaphragm, so I'm gonna get you to lay back. Okay. Again, and I'm gonna raise this bed up a little bit and get your head flat. Basically, I'm going to come down and check for placement mm -hmm. of the diaphragm, and I will actually kind of use my fleximeter to percuss again, um, just coming from the midclavicular line, um, probably starting at C4-ish, and that usually is right around, um, right above, right below the manubrium at the sternum level, but because of the breast, I'm not going to palpate that area, but I'm going to come right below and start, and at the area of dullness. This is over twelve weeks, so basically when the sound changes to dullness, um, that is a notation of the diaphragm and the diaphragm is pretty much um, probably at T10. Normally um, we would note that it is three to five centimeters below the T10 level, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, are you comfortable? Yes. Okay. Moving on to the cardiovascular system, I am going to basically take a look around again, looking at the area um, for any lifts, heaves, any type of abnormal palpation. Um, lay your head back for me, Elise. Just basically noting her carotids. Um, there is a visible pulse on the right and the left, and that's not abnormal for her to have um, pulsations that are visible. Um, her thin frame actually allows us to see it better. Um, for the sake of the video, I'm just going to hold on to your radio pulse and okay. basically um, just feeling, touching, listening, all that good stuff. Pulse deficits are noted when there is a difference between the apical pulse, which is at the point of maximal impact, as well as um, a deficit or a greater carotid. The carotid and the apical are both listened to for a full minute. And if there is a greater def reference, then we would note that as a pulse deficit. And for the sake of time in the video, it would be noted and documented as within normal limits. I am going to basically um, look, listen, listen right now at my heart sounds. With the diaphragm of my stethoscope, sorry if it's cold, I'm gonna come across the right sternal border and I'm gonna first listen at, let's see, right here the sternal notch is my landmark. Very good, prominent here. Come down and I have my second intercostal space right here. I'm gonna take a listen. And I do hear audible S1 and S2 at the right end across the space. I'm going to come directly over to my left. And I'm actually hearing S1, S2 at the second intercostal space. Then I'll bring my stethoscope down to the third. Normal S1, S2. No adventitious sounds. No abnormal um, murmurs. No whistles or anything heard at this point. I'm going to note coming down further at... Basically, towards the sternal border, the notation of my, um, at the fourth and fifth border, I'm looking um, for my tricuspid sound. And I do know um, positive S1 and S2 as well. As we move over towards the apex, which is at the fifth intercostal space, I'm going to hear 
positive S1 and S2. Basically, right now, what I'm hearing is a normal heart rhythm at the mitral area, and it's also known as the point of maximal impact. How are you doing, Elise? Sorry if I was pressing a little nope. bit too hard. All breath sounds are audible. They're noted within normal limits. I am going to next kind of auscultate, actually palpate, mm -hmm. um, different various arteries, and I'll name them all. Okay. Right now, I want my camera person just to scan the room real quick since we're kind of like halfway through the video. Thank you. All right, I'm going to come and feel my hands, mm -hmm. maybe cold. Fill your temporal arteries. Do notate pulsation. Okay, we already kind of noted that there were carotid arteries, okay? And I'm going to go note that she does have brachial pulses, and that will be done bilateral. Radial pulses are also noted bilaterally as well. I'm sorry, let me kind of keep your privacy here. I'm going to just pull up your pants legs, sorry. Well, I would note that she has femoral pulses in both growing bilaterally as well. I'm noting that she does have a very good popliteal pulse and posterior tibial is palpable as well last but not least very good even over the sock Elise has a very um palpable um dorsalis pedis Elise's pulses are noted to be two to three bounding and they are within normal limits all right finally and i'm moving on to the abdomen thanks for being so patient i gotta go back down again okay we're basically notating that Elise's abdomen is normal appearance is very symmetric with the rest of her skin a couple of bruises i'm seeing there at the lower abdomen as well gets from moving so um there are no lesions there are no abnormal um lifts that i can know and everything looks good umbilicus is depressed it is midline it is clear of any type of drainage. I don't detect any type of foul odor. It is um, concave right now and that is normal for Elisa's thin frame and stature. Uh, no presence of stride. Vascular patterns, I'm not really seeing any at this present point to the naked eye. Right now what I'm going to do is kind of like auscultate, listen for bowel sounds, okay? And what we will want to know is how, when was the last time you ate? about an hour ago. So it's not going to be uncommon for me to hear some hyperactive bowel sounds at this point. No bowel sounds are anywhere from every five minutes to every ten, I mean I'm sorry, every five to ten seconds. You'll listen in the quads over a period of 60 seconds. I am going to start in the right lower quad and I'm going to just paste this and start this code. Very good, coming up. Awesome. Very active bowel sounds. They're not hyperactive, they're just normal. And I can hear them well with the bell. I'm sorry to dab the diaphragm of the stethoscope. While I have you flat again, I'm gonna just take the um, bell and my stethoscope and kind of listen over your um, cardiac area again. Um, Listen for any type of adventition sounds at the aorta. Uh, basically, we're listening with this for any low sounds, whistles, or blows. Not noting any, then we kind of follow the aorta down to the renal um, and iliac branches of the aorta, and we do not know any. Serves the um, kidneys well. Very good. No bruise, no humps or anything noted. Bowel sounds are active and within, you know, normal limits at this time. No rubs, no frictions noted throughout her assessment of her bowel sounds that um, does indicate that everything seems to be functioning properly, okay? What we're going to do right now is I'm going to percuss the abdomen, okay? 
and I'm going to kind of start um, in the right lower quad and move over again. I'm just listening for different sounds, okay? And basically, I'm going from a sound of timpani to dullness. And that does note that I am over her landmark of the liver when the sound changes. And I'm going to move on over to the left upper quad. Normally, you cannot palpate the liver or the spleen. The, pal the liver may be palpated, can be marked by sounds. But if they were easily palpated, that would um, indicate some abnormalities. And at least it seems to fall within normal limits. Basically, um, going from a sound of timpani to dullness over her landmarks at this point. Okay, very good. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and try to do something, okay? It's kind of like measuring the liver at this point. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start at your umbilicus, which is your belly button. I'm going to take my marking pen and I'm going to take my ruler that I have here. And I am going to note basically my sounds. I'm going to start here and I'm going to come out towards my right, okay? Hear the different sound? Okay, that dullness indicates that I'm at your liver, okay? So I would place a mark here and there is the X, okay? Then I will kind of look right here at the mid-clavicular line, come down to basically your fourth intercostal space. And we noted that earlier it was right at the nipple line. And I'm going to come down. More dull because it's over bone. I'm really looking for that solid sound that I heard when I was initially. And it probably is below the rear cage where I can feel it. Hear the difference? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is the sound that I'm going to mark as well. X there. Basically, I'm going to take this, my ruler. At least falls well within guidelines of five centimeters. Five to ten would be normal. Had it been normal or greater than ten centimeters, we will be worrying about some kind of hepatomegaly, okay? I'm going to actually now just go around and palpate the areas, okay? If I don't get too heavy handed, let me know. Maybe a little uncomfortable. Start the right little quad. Any tenderness when I touch, any pain, discomfort. I don't feel or note any bulges at this point. Um, she seems to be tolerating her percussion and her palpation well. Everything seems to be very symmetrical at this point. No tenderness at the bladder region. And I actually do not palpate her bladder, which will indicate that she has an empty bladder at this time. This concludes my assessment. I thank you for your time, Elise. I'm going to go ahead and warm you back up. I'm going to sit you back up. I appreciate her again. I'm going to let your bed down. All right. Have a nice day. Thank you so much.